Okay, so now how do we evaluate limits? Evaluating limits actually requires you to follow some theorems, but I will not be giving you the theorems anymore but because that may bore you. How do we really get this L? Well, L is a real number, remember that f of x is a function, a again is a real number. So what we do is just substitute a, substitute this, for every x in the function f of x to get the real number L. So as easy as that. Aside from the fact that the limit of a constant is always the constant itself, like this. Like the limit of 5 as x approaches 2 is still 5. Okay, it's the constant itself. The limit of 10 as x approaches negative 1 fourths is still 10. Okay, the limit of negative 4 as x approaches 0 is still the same number negative 4. So that's for the limit of a constant. But you, if you have functions of x, say you want to evaluate the limit of uh, 2x minus 1 as x approaches 1, for example, you simply have to substitute. This is the value of this is the value of a, right? This is as x approaches a, so the value of a is 1. Okay, so if you want to evaluate the limit of 2x minus 1 as x approaches 1, you simply have to substitute 1 for x in the function. So that would be... Uh, 2 times 1 minus 1, so we'll get uh, 2 minus 1, you get 1, right? So our answer is the limit of 2x minus 1 as x approaches 1 is equal to 1. This is it. Alright. Now if you want to evaluate the limit of x squared plus 2, as x approaches, as x approaches, let's say zero, we'll just substitute zero for every x in the function. So that's uh, zero squared plus two. So we get the final answer. The limit of x squared plus two as x approaches zero is equal to two. As simple as that. So we just substitute a for every x in the function. But remember that the limit of the function as x approaches a is different from the value of the function. I have explained that to you in the previous video. So now let's have something more challenging. The limit of x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2. Let's uh, evaluate this. Now if we try to substitute 2 right away for every x in the function, then we'll get 0 cubed minus uh, 8 divided by, no, this is, this is supposed to be 2, sorry. So 2 cubed minus 8, 2 cubed minus 8 divided by 2 minus 2. So what we'll get is 0 over 0. All right, in determinate form, 0 over 0. So whenever we, we, we get something like 0 over 0, that indeterminate form, we have to do something. Do something with the function, okay? We can't have 0 over 0 because that is indeterminate. So as we can see, the numerator is factorable, okay? Let me just write that for you again. The numerator is factorable. I hope you, ha you know how to factor this using a formula. The factors will be x minus 2 times the quantity, kindly recall the formula to uh, factor x, x cubed minus 8 easier. Okay, plus 2x plus 4. So over the same number. Oh, don't forget, don't forget this. It should be uh, the limit. Okay, as x approaches 2, don't forget that. Now, we simplify the function, x minus 2 divided by itself is 1. Okay, so now we have limit of just x squared plus 2x plus 4 as x approaches 2. Now, we can evaluate this limit by substituting 2 for every x in this, the function in the simplified form. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 2 squared. Okay, 2 squared for this. Plus 2 times 2 for this, and then plus 4. 
So what we'll get is 4 plus 4 plus 4, or that's going to give us 12. Okay, so that is the limit of x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2. It's equal to 12. Okay, remember when you get the 0 over 0 in determinate form, you have to do something with the function first. Okay, you can just give me a 0 over 0 answer. Alright, another example. Let's take the limit of 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 all over 4x minus 2 as x approaches 1 half. Okay, so let's substitute 1 half for every x in the function. That's 2 times 1 half squared plus 7 times 1 half minus 4 all over 4 times 1 half minus 2. So let's evaluate that. Okay, we'll have 2 times 1 half squared is 1 fourth plus 7 over 2 minus 4 divided by, well, 4 times 1 half in the denominator is just 2 minus 2. Okay, so again, simplifying the numerator, 2 times 1 fourth in the first term is just 1 half minus 7 over 2 minus 4 divided by 2 minus 2. Okay, so we'll get what? Uh, 1 half minus 7 over 2 is negative uh, 6 over 2 minus 4 divided by 2 minus 2. Wait, I think I have something wrong here. This should be plus, plus, plus. 1 half plus 7 over 2. So that's going to be, nope, this is not 6 over 2. But it should be, so 1 half plus 7 over 2 is 8 over 2. Or that's, that's 4, right? So 8 over 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0, and then 2 minus 2 in the denominator is 0. Okay, so we have that. It means to say that we have to what? do something with the function. So what do we do? We can factor the numerator. Again, review on factoring. So let me just copy the given function divided by 4x minus 2 as x approaches 1 half. Alright, so that would be the limit of, in factored form, the numerator is 2x minus 1 times x plus 4. Yep. Okay. And then you can have the common factor in the denominator is 2. So factoring 2 from the denominator, we'll get 2 times the quantity, quantity uh, 2x minus 1. Okay, as x approaches 1 half. There you go. So 2x minus 1 divided by itself is 1. All right. So we now have the limit of just x plus 4 over 2 as x approaches 1 half. So what do we get? What do we get? Substituting 1 half for x in the function. That's 1 half plus 4 over 2. But uh, what is 1 half plus 4? Okay, we go, we go up here on the other side. So on the other side, what is 1 half plus 4? 1 half plus 4 is 9 over 2. 9 over 2 divided by the denominator 2, what do we get? 9 over 4. So this is actually 9 over 2 times 1 half. So how do we divide fractions again? We get the reciprocal of the denominator. The denominator's reciprocal is 1 half, and then proceed to multiplication. And so we get 9 over 4. And this is the limit of or original given is 2x squared plus 7x minus 4, all over 4x minus 2 as x approaches 1 half. This is our final answer. All right, another one, the limit of... Um, x plus h quantity squared minus x squared all over h okay as h approaches 0 so in this case we substitute 0 for h because look at this look at this part h approaches 0 okay so we are not substituting 0 for x but instead we're substituting 0 for h all right so here we go uh, we'll get x plus h, where h is approaching 0, squared, minus x squared over 0. So what do we get? 
uh, that's going to give us x squared minus x squared all right, over 0, or that is, again, a 0 over 0. So it means to say we have to do something with the function because we, again, have obtained the indeterminate form 0 over 0. So what can we do? <coughs> Let's see. Copying the given again, x plus h squared, quantity squared minus x squared over h as h approaches 0. So what, what we can do here is expand the expression, this expression, expand. <coughs> and that's going to give us, upon expansion, x squared plus 2 hx plus h squared. And then the last remaining uh, term in the numerator minus x squared all over h as h approaches 0. Okay, combining like terms, x squared minus x squared is 0. Okay, now we have 2hx and then plus h squared in the numerator. There's a common factor, which is h. We can factor out h from those two remaining terms. Factoring h will get 2x in the first remaining term. And then factoring h from h squared, we get h divided by h. And then h over itself is again 1. So we are just actually evaluating the limit of 2x plus h as h approaches 0. So what do we do now? Substitute 0 for h only. 2x plus h. So it's simply 2x. This is the limit of x plus h. The given quantity squared minus x squared over h as h approaches 0. This is the final answer.